We're gonna read it out of the read it out of the good book. Out of the good book. We're gonna read the good book. What are you doing way over there? I need to be over here. That's where you started. At. Where? <laughs> I don't know that. Okay. Alrighty then. All right. Good to be back. Yeah. Good to be. Back. Everybody's back now, and we got everybody. All the, all the uh, players are back home now. They've been gone on the All Star break, but now the All Stars are back. So we got them. Uh, got everybody together. So thank you for holding it together while I was gone, Bob, and the rest of you. Uh, Joe. What's Joe's not here? Joe and Gwen? Don't know. Okay. All right, let's go to Romans 4. Now, remember we were talking about, we've been in this uh, study of Romans when circumcision and uncircumcision. We know, <clears throat> we do know for a fact that uh, that doesn't mean anything of your spirituality or anything. The, the natural form of Circumcision, okay? Has no bearing at all. It was your mom and daddy's fault if you wasn't. And that was the same way with them. You know, they, your mom and daddy's who, got, who had you circumcised. So it really doesn't matter. It's the circumcision of the heart. We know that it's the excess flesh that we live in <laughs> that needs to be trimmed, right? Yes. The excess flesh that we live in needs to be trimmed, all right? And it's not the natural flesh, you know? It's all spiritual. Because watch this, in Romans 4, we see that, now now listen, to, to make it all sound good, or to make it all in continuity, back in the Old Testament, there could be no circumcision of the heart. Right. Because Jesus hadn't died. There was no Holy Ghost to go inside the person to cut the, to cut the foreskin of your flesh. Right. Amen. So God, I was thinking about this because you know we're getting ready to go into the fifth seal, and you see that uh, God is a just God. He's so just that He gives a group of people eternal life that didn't even want it. He blinded their eyes so that we could come in. So He had to be just and give them eternal life. He had to do that, or He would be a respecter of person that said, "Well, I just used you." To get to you know the Gentile bride, no, which he did. He blinded them purposely, but he said, "I won't ever forget them." Because in the Old Testament, here's where we see this set up with Abraham. Cannot forget Abraham. I cannot forget Moses. Cannot forget all these people in the Old Testament. Because you know what? They lived a godly life without the Holy Ghost in their soul. Now they had an anointing, and the anointing would come on. They could be. Biblical people. This is what I like about it. you. Could they could be biblical people with the anointing on them, yeah. but they were just a common regular person right. when that anointing came off of it. Moses could kill an Egyptian. David could have relations with a woman that he wasn't supposed to. Yeah. Right? That was the human part. But yet David could go into the not into the inner court of the temple, but he could go in the temple and say, "Hey, I'm a circumcised Jew." Right. So I'm okay, and God, you know what? God, God honored that. He said, "Okay, I can't go any further than that because I honor what what you've done." What he done though? He didn't honor. He didn't honor Abraham circumcising himself so much as that he honored Abraham's faith in what God said. Yeah. He honored his faith. Because right. watch chapter four. I'm going to read about eight verses. And then I'm going to read it in the in the diaglot because man, the diaglot really in this part of this scripture brings a lot to to make it more where you can understand what's going on. So Romans chapter four. Now, if you've got a Schofield Bible, it says this is justification by faith illustrated, which it is. Now, see, we're we're still in the seals. We're still in just. Anytime I hear the word justification, I'm in the first seal. Okay, I'm in the first seal because that's the seal to me. That's the seal of justification. Right. All right. Second seal is the seal of sanctification. Third seal is the seal of the Holy Ghost, wine and the oil. And then the fourth seal is what? God incarnate in human flesh. Satan incarnate in human flesh. That's what we're going to start with. Seal number four. Then seal number five is what? Grace. The greatest grace you can have is that God give eternal life to somebody that didn't want it. Right. 
Same way with us. He gave eternal life to us. We didn't want it. Yeah. We didn't. That's right. We were born contrary. Right. All right. So now let's look at this Romans chapter four. That's why I say once we see to me, to me the thunder is the voice of God when the seal breaks, and it's the seal that on this, it's the seal on this scripture is what we need broke. Actually, it's the seal over our eyes yeah. that Satan has put up. We're gonna we're gonna study that. In, the, in this four seal, the lot in this four seal, that Satan blinded people's eyes by the billions all down through the church ages. He blinded their eyes. Now God winked at the ignorance of some that tried to believe. They had faith, and he can't go past the faith. God said, if you have faith, have faith in me. All right? So we're going to see that, though, as we see the seals progress up further. Because remember, in this four seal that's coming up, Man, it's a lot to go on. Satan is destroyed. The dragon's cast out. Of, uh, Satan's cast out of heaven. The uh, the red dragon's cast out. The, um, God goes to Israel. You and I become God incarnate. Satan is destroyed in our flesh. Right. So man, that fourth seal is pretty tough because that the rapture takes place on the fourth seal. So we're gone. So everything's got to culminate in that fourth seal. Same way with Satan. Everything's got to culminate in that fourth seal for him also. But watching Abraham, though, here we see that Abraham, the faith of Abraham, it wasn't that Abraham was circumcised. That was an outward sign. Just like you and I are baptized. Just like you and I wear what we wear. and We, we try our best to be different. We don't want to be different. We don't ever walk out in the world and say I'm better than you because right. I don't cut my hair and I don't. Right. Wrong attitude. Right. It's just that I was thinking the other day though, though, let me tell you this sounds contrary, though we are a special group of people, though we are a set aside group of people, just like Israel. That's why people hate Israel now. Because God said, whoever blesses Israel, I'll bless. Whoever curses Israel, I'll curse. And that still goes on today. Brother Brown said, I read it yesterday, that the reason that God is not bringing judgment on the United States is because they are a friend of Israel. Mm -hmm. And whoever is a friend of Israel is a friend of God. Be it that we have prostitutes on every corner, that doesn't matter. God said, if you'll be good to Israel, but now you see us now in the last administration and in this one, they're turning, well, you know, Trump trying to get back over there. But anyway, it was that separation of well, we'll just let them alone and do what they want to do, you know. And you see how it's going to happen because we're going to turn away from Israel, I guarantee you, because everybody is. Right. And everybody's going to turn away from Israel and what's God going to do? He's going to send two prophets over there that the world ain't never seen before. Yeah. And they're going to watch them do miracles like you never saw miracles done before. But you and I are not going to be there to see it. We're going to be out of here because of this faith that we have in the Word of God. All right, let's get started. What shall we say in Romans chapter 4? Like I said, my uh, iPad crashed, so we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. Don't need, I put batteries in here, and it's still running. Don't, the, only, the only on and off button is when you open it. You know? What shall we say then? Now remember, we've been talking about circumcision and uncircumcision. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, Hath found because remember, Abraham according to the flesh has nothing to do with us. We are not a descendant of Abraham. Right. But we are a descendant of the faith Amen. part of Abraham. Right. Abraham believed God and it was imputed for righteousness. That's the same way with you and I. Yes. Listen to me. That's the same way that God imputes righteousness to you is as you believe. We're going to read it right here. Paul asked the question, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, in other words, going behind the building and taking the taking the you know the knife and cutting his foreskin off, and if he was justified by that, then man, you can throw away what Christ did. Okay, that's what Paul's trying to tell us. You can throw away Christ on the cross. All you need to do, males, was go be circumcised. And then you females, according to the Old Testament, were circumcised with the male, not physically, but you were circumcised when you married and you had a head, your father, that all come under 
uh, circumcision in the Old Testament. Now, that don't happen now. Right? You're not saved because your mama saved. You're not saved because your daddy saved. Alright? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath wherefore to glory, but not before God. He can't glory before God that he's... Listen. In the condition we're in now, it does, it's not that God doesn't care about circumcision because He really doesn't. He don't care whether you're physically circumcised or not. He don't care. And that's what He's saying here. But how are you going to glory in something of works? But how are you going to glory? Sure, Abraham could glory at the moment. In the Old Testament, Abraham could say, I am a circumcised person. That's what they were getting into with the temple because them Jews, man, they hung on that circumcision. Right. Walked in the temple and Timothy, where one of them was not circumcised, and they're like, you're defiling the temple. Well, see, that's what Paul's dealing with right here. He's dealing with, hey, we know Abraham. We know that he could show he was a Jew. We know that you have this lineage. But Christ has come. God has come in the flesh to do away with all that flesh stuff. Amen? And to go into the heart of the person. Because Jesus told him, remember, he said, he said, if you look on a woman to lust after her now, you commit adultery. Now in the Old Testament, as long as you didn't touch them, you could think in your mind and have intercourse in your mind with them, in other words. And you know what? It wasn't accounted. But when Jesus came, he said, no. No, it's the inward man that we're talking about here. Okay? That's why I was telling you they, they really enjoyed when we went to, we went to Oklahoma um, talking about the uh, the flesh. Because, you know, you, you take the flesh out of this whole thing. Your flesh just manifests what's on the inside, period. Only. It doesn't sin. Your flesh doesn't sin. So forget about it. Don't worry about trying to beat the flesh up. Get the flesh right. Get the person inside right. And the flesh will follow. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not before God. That's right. You see what Paul said? No, but not before God. Right. Abraham could glory on the earth all he wanted to. Hey, I'm a Jew, or I'm a circumcised person. But God's like, I'll accept that for the moment, but that's not the whole deal, Abraham. What did he do? He recognized Abraham's faith. Because watch. For what saith the Scripture? All right, Abraham believed God. That's Genesis 3.20. You got your Schofield Bible. Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness, or reckoned, or imputed, or put to his account. It wasn't the account that he went and got circumcised. Yeah. It was that he believed what God told him to do, and he got up and did it. And you know what? There was no reservation in his heart to do it. He just got it and did it. Okay? Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Like God owed you something. God don't owe you a debt. That's right. He paid a debt. He did not owe. I owed a debt. I could not pay. The debt's on us. So now to him that worketh is a reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. In other words, Abraham could not say, and I don't believe Abraham did say, all right, God, at 99 years old, I went back here in the tent and I circumcised myself. I went through all this pain and agony. Now you owe me something. See, that's not Abraham. That wouldn't have been Abraham. Now that might have been a lot of other people. That begrudgingly done that, because remember, Abraham circumcised his whole household, and his kids were up and grown, or Ishmael was anyway. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was a little begrudging, maybe, but Abraham, I don't believe, I believe he what? He believed in God and went and done what he'd done without a debt. God, you owe me something now. Yeah. Abraham never in the scripture said, God, you owe me. Yeah. No. And that's the way you better not be. Yeah. Amen. You know, God, I've lived 40 years, I went to church, you owe me. He don't owe you nothing. All right? So now, you see how the Scripture is, though, look. But to him that worketh not, but what believeth on him. 
that justifies the ungodly. There's no reason to justify the just. <laughs> you, you don't justify the just. Now, you do now. Because the just and the justifier is the same. This is after Christ has come. This is after we come under this uh, eagle anointing. We see that we are just as righteous as God is. All right. Now, Abraham, I don't believe he saw that. Because it wasn't revealed to him that he was just as righteous as God. If he did, he'd have a little different attitude. Okay? But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, watch, comma, his faith is counted for righteousness. Not his works, but his faith is counted for righteousness. We got to believe things that we don't see. We got to believe things before they come, knowing that they're coming, but you still got to believe. You still got to believe. We got to believe all this. Uh, you believe there's going to be a rapture? Amen. They ain't going to come yet. Not for us. Yep. But you know what? We're a part of it. We're in the process. Mm -hmm. And it's proved on that fourth seal. That's why I say the fourth seal proves the rapture takes place. Because mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost is gone off the earth. <clears throat> all right, look. Now watch. Verse 6. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Alright? Saying. Alright, you got that? Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute What's impute, reckon, sin. Because look, even David, under the blood of bulls and goats, because look right here, whose sins are covered. Mine and your sins are covered on a daily basis, but mine and your sins in the soul are not just covered. They're gone. But now that wasn't Abraham. See, this all this proves that they didn't have the new birth in the, new in the Old Testament. They couldn't get rid of the sin inside the soul. There was no burner. There was no works. There was no circumcision. That's what Paul said. There was no circumcision of the heart in the Old Testament. It was just a fleshly outward works that God said, okay, I'll accept that for the moment. But remember, remember, David was a man after God's own heart. The inward part of David. Yeah. Right. The flesh part of David was, I would have shot him. <laughs> if I'd have been Uriah and if I'd have lived through that battle and found yeah. out what he did to my wife and was yeah. going to do to me, yeah. I'd have shot him. Yeah. If I was in the Old Testament. Right. I'd ask for forgiveness in the New Testament. But like I said, if I was Uriah and I made it through that battle and somebody told me that David purposely was going to have me murdered, he'd have been a dead, he'd have been, he'd have been a dead king. I mean, really, I mean, that's the way it was, but it wasn't that way. We know that because God knew David. Listen, God knew David was going to do this. Before the foundation of the world, he knew David was going to do that. But he knew that David, that struggle of the two people, that struggle of the anointing of God being on David because he was a good guy, God had already anointed him to be king, so he couldn't take that away. Okay, so that part was what saved him, really, when we know the prophet come in and spoke over him. Same thing with all of us. But it was truly what David, that David was anointed to be king of Israel, and they were nothing going to stop him. You know. Was God working strictly on the spirit back in the Old Testament? Yes. The yes, because an anointing, anointings fall on your spirit. Anointings don't fall on your soul. That's right. Everybody understand that? Because anointed ones are black on the soul, in the soul, dead. Say it, sit Satan. Just say, Satan in the soul. But anointed by the true Holy Ghost on their spirit, that's anointed ones. See, to me, anointed ones was what was in the Old Testament. They were anointed ones. They weren't bride. They were anointed by God, but their soul was still... Were they lost? No. See, you got to remember this. Go back to where new birth, eternal life is two different things. That's true. The new birth and eternal life is two different things. 
Because the foolish virgin is not going to get eternal life in their soul. They're not going to be born again. They're going to be given eternal life at the white throne judgment. Amen? All right. A cup of water in my name. Soul just as black as it can be. Just a whoremonger of whoremongers. But at the end, God's going to give them eternal life. Well, it's got to be the soul. It's got to be the soul because it's the soul that sin it that dies. That's what I was telling them in, in Barnesville. It's that soul that we got to work on. The soul of the person. We can anoint the spirit. We can clean the flesh up. We can put all kind of stuff on it. <clears throat> Still black. Still black on the inside. If your soul's not born again, then it's, it's just a dark place. It's, it's, a, it's, it's just all I can say. It's the dark horse. You know, it's, the, it's that black horse rider. That... Uh, not just anoint you. But now see, when Satan's Superman comes, God's Superman came and it was God in human flesh. Okay. Amen? When Satan's Superman comes, when we leave out here, when Satan's Superman comes, it will be Satan incarnate yeah. in human flesh. Yeah. Did y'all see that uh, uh, Trump's nominee for Supreme Court? You see yes. the guy? He's a Jesuit. Yes. He come from Notre Dame. He was a Jesuit priest. Yep. So it's getting close, folks. It's getting close. It's getting close. We got so many Jews and so many Catholics. I think there's only one Protestant on the Supreme Court now. So we'll see. But you know what? Let them. Let that. Let that be the way it is because it's nothing to me. I can't stop it. You can't either. It's working right in the hands of God. You know. <clears throat> but to him that worketh not that's why I want you to see that watch Paul Paul is separating the Old Testament from the New Testament he's separating because remember the, the great um, maybe it's not a falling out between Paul and James but in commentaries and in people bringing scripture they've always said Paul said you're saved by faith James says you're saved by works and Brother Brown preached works is faith expressed. Right. Now well, that puts it all right together. Paul's not saying it's all by faith and it doesn't matter what you do. Right. James is not saying it's all by works and your soul can be black as midnight. No. That ain't it. Right. James is saying if you got faith, this is what you'll do. Right. Same thing Paul said. Paul said if you got faith, don't worry about circumcision. Don't worry about being righteous. It's the inside man that makes right. The righteousness. Because what? <clears throat> Saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Now I'm going to read the dialogue. And, and listen to this. And if you got your Bible, read what you what I'm reading. What we just read, but I'm going to read you what the dialogue said. This is this is really good. What then shall we say of Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has a ground of boasting, but not before God. All right? For what say the Scripture? And Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the reward is not accounted as a favor, but as a debt. You see the difference? By it brings it out a lot clearer right there. For to him who does not work, but who believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Alright, that was verse 5. But to him who does not work, but who believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Even, verse 6, even as David also speaks of the blessedness of the man to whom God accounts righteousness apart from works. See, that's the great, like I said, that's the great uh, dissertation that they go through when Paul said it's all by faith and don't worry about the works. Because you see that in denominations. Because you know what? That's the basic for Baptist doctrine. Once saved, always saved. Regardless, smoke a cigarette, you know, do whatever, and drink a beer and cuss and all that. What? I got my letter. And that's what they're saying. And they have a valid point if you just read it like this. I believe God saved me. That's what somebody says. I believe God saved me. Well, if you believe it, but if God really did accept your faith, then the works behind it will account 
for the faith that you have. All right? Verse 7, saying, Happy are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Happy is the man to whom the Lord will not account sin. All right, let's go to verse 9. We doing okay? Everybody all right? Yeah. Verse 9. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? Or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Because watch, listen. Abraham's faith was reckoned before he was circumcised. Right. In Genesis 12, when God said, Get up, Abraham, go to another country, Abraham gets up. Now, see, God started accounting. What's an account? You build up things, you know. You put money in an account so it builds up, all right? So his account was building way before he was circumcised. Because when God called him, he was in his 70s. When he was circumcised, he was in his 90s. So he walked all them years, of, you know. That's why I say you can walk through justification and sanctification. But you don't have the circumcision of the heart yet. The Holy Ghost is the only thing that will circumcise or do away with all that ungodliness that's inside your soul. Alright? So he walked for years and God was accounting it for righteousness. Alright? And you know what? The little mistakes along the way like I heard a preacher say one time, which is true. Paul is looking back into the Old Testament through the cross with grace and saying, Abraham was strong in faith, never wavered, everything was fine and dandy. Now you go back over there and read. He tried it with his handmaid. Right? right? Got an Ishmael. Took his wife down to Gerir and gave her away. Twice. So, you know, you look at all that and you go, and then Abraham laughs at God. You see all that? That's just human stuff. Right. That's like our, all of our human stuff are going to be really, the Bible says, former things will be passed away, all things will become new. We won't remember all the bad things and all the trials and tribulations that we went through. I don't believe so. Amen. Why would you want to believe? Why would you want to, why would you want to take that with you in eternity? Yeah, that's right. No, no thank you. But it's a fight here, though. We have to fight it here. It's got to be fought here. When the battle's won, it's going to be won right here. It's not going to be won in heaven. It's going to be won right here. All right? And that's what we're talking about here. The battle, then, is an inward guy because watch. Cometh the blessedness, then, upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? If it wasn't by circumcision... If it wasn't by uncircumcision, he's talking about the flesh. When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision. Not, look, go look. I just explained that. I just explained this. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Look, not in circumcision, but in circumcision. Because he walked a long time in uncircumcision. Right? right? right. But God reckoned his faith in uncircumcision. Because remember, those who he has justified, he has already glorified. Did not Abraham get a let me let me put this right a glorified body? It got changed, folks. Whether it was flesh to flesh, he went from ninety nine to twenty. That's right. <laughs> That's enough for me. I wouldn't you couldn't keep me in a tent. <laughs> Except Sarah was in there, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, how was it reckoned then? Watch now, but, but look, verse eleven. Here's the here's the whole thing. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are what seal. Right. So it's talking about the Holy Ghost. His circumcision was a seal. That God accepted his faith. All right, watch. A seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, yet being uncircumcised. Because really, your faith is reckoned to you when you go to the altar and say, God, forgive me of my sins. 
you have to have faith that somebody does away with them. You've got to have faith that, that you can call him whatever you want to call him, Allah, God, or whatever, but somebody has done away with your sins. Yes. How could you be a Christian? You could, I mean, you know, sure you go back to bed and you got the same old nature and all that stuff. We know that. But God has done something. If you've never went through justification, you should know exactly when you go through it. I know exactly when I went through it. Amen. Amen. Felt good and clean, but I still had the root of evil. I had to go on to sanctification. I had to go on to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. All right. Same with all of us. A seal of the righteousness of faith which he had, yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. Not a father of all them that be circumcised. He says that he may be the father of all them that believe. Look. Though they be not circumcised. That righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Amen. Let me read this one more and then we'll come in a minute. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Because you know what the Jews were doing? The Jews were going, we're Abraham's seed. We're the faith seed of Abraham by natural lineage. And he was circumcised and we were circumcised and that's what we depend on. Right? They were boasting. Now, you see what boasting got over here. You know, you're not supposed to do that. But they were boasting. And then Paul walks up and said, Okay, bring the Torah out. Let's, let's, look, let's look at Genesis because, you know, Paul knew the script. He said, bring that thing out here. Let's look at Genesis chapter 12. Was he circumcised? Right? No, he wasn't circumcised right there. Well, didn't he start his journey when God said, get up, get out of Ur of Chaldees and go to a land I'll tell you about and get up and, you know. And the Jews is like, hmm. In other words, we've never heard anybody tell us this before because, see, they laid it all on that Abraham was circumcised and he was the father of our circumcision and we circumcised so we're okay with God. Right? Right. Then Paul comes along and says, I think he was in, the, you know, the, the, the faith that you're talking about was reckoned to Abraham the day he got up and walked out. Yeah. Why are you saying it was circumcision? Because he walked right here. Look, verse 12, and the father of circumcision, to him they're not the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. And boy, that's why the Jews hated Paul. That's why they killed him. All right? Right? Because look, let's read 13, and we'll stop right there on 13, and, and then we'll read the diagram. For the promise. Now, what is the promise? That he should be the heir of the world. Remember, what did God tell Abraham? Wherever the sole of your feet goes, look up in the stars, look down at the sand, your seed's going to be counted. Now, he's not talking about natural lineage. God is talking about spiritual lineage. What? Faith. This whole thing is built on faith and whether you can believe or not. Right? For the promise, comma, that he should be the heir of the world, comma, was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, <clears throat> but through the righteousness of faith. Yeah. Everything's got to be based on faith. Amen. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. In other words, look, all I got to do is, I'm, hey, I'm circumcised. I'm God's people. Let's go have a beer. Let's go get married three or four times. Let's, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't do that, though, because what Paul, you know what? Paul was watching them do it. Yeah. Them Pharisees, is, you know, we circumcise. We, we, could, we can come in the temple and go in and out. God's, God's blessing us. Yeah. Paul said, your blessing is fixing to be done away with. Because when Christ came under the law, He took away all that, and it's got to be by faith. Let me read. Let me go down to 16, and then we'll stop. 
For when for if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void. Right? The natural lineage of Abraham. If it was a natural, the the Isaac and the Ishmael and the seven children he had after that, they were natural descendants of Abraham. If it was just a natural lineage, then faith is made void. You have to have no faith. You just got to be married under the right mom and dad. I mean, you got to be born under the wrong under the right mom and dad. Right? All right. And the promise made of none effect. See, that promise went totally away if it's all by lineage, because they did hold to their lineage, and they still held to it. And Jesus had to deal with it. Now Paul's having to deal with it. All right? Because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Now I circled that in my Bible and I wrote what? What did I write on it? Genesis 1, 26, and 27. Because that's the seed he's talking about. Christ. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. All right, let me read. Now I'm going to read the dialogue. Listen to this. Verse 9. Is this blessedness then on the circumcision? Question mark. Or also on the uncircumcision? For we affirm faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it accounted? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the symbol of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness of that faith which he had while in uncircumcision. Which means Abraham didn't just come up with this great faith after he was circumcised. That's the whole point. Abraham telling him just because he come up one day and was circumcised, Abraham just started believing. No, that was really the end of his journey. Yes. Now, sure, he had to believe for the child, but Brother Brown said he believed for the child the first day God told him, 25 years before that. All right? Amen. So that's what we got to believe. We got to believe not... It, it, hey, if I want Hannah, if Hannah was sitting here today, filled with the Holy Ghost, and in church, there's no faith to that. That's right. That's right. There's no faith to that. Right. She's here. Right. But the faith is, I don't see her. Right. Abraham didn't see the baby. Right. But he accounted, God accounted his faith, and that's when the baby comes. Right. God is going to account my faith that she's going to be here. Amen. 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 So Amen. you think the same, same way you... Amen. Doesn't matter if it's for 10 minutes Amen. and then the rapture takes place, or 10 Amen. minutes in the world gets blood, whatever, doesn't matter. Amen. 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 In order that he might be the father of all uncircumcised believers... This is in bold letters, believers, that the righteousness may be accounted to them. So it's only accounted to believers. All right? Verse 12, and a father of circumcision, not only to those who are of circumcision, but to those who are tread in the footsteps of the faith of our father Abraham. In other words, anybody, circumcised or uncircumcised, if you got the faith of Abraham, you're walking in his footsteps which he had in uncircumcision. Verse 13, For the promise to Abraham and to his seed that he should be an inheritor of a world. I like that. And the world is capital letter. Inheritor of a world was not through law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those of the law are heirs, the faith becomes useless. And the promise abrogated. I have not looked that word up, but I'll look it up. Abrogate. A-B-R-O-G-A-T-E-D. Abrogated. Besides, comma, verse 15, the law works out wrath. In other words, the law is a destroyer. Look what happened. Look what happened in the Old Testament. It destroyed people. But where law is not, there is no transgression. Alright? Verse 16, right here, we'll finish right here. On account of this, it is from faith, that it may be according to favor in order that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that of the law only, but to that of the faith of Abraham, who is a father of us all. So Abraham 
Nothing by flesh. He's our Father. Amen. By faith. We take the same faith Abraham had and say, God, I'm just going to go on what you told me. You told me I would have children, a lineage, and we would have, like I said, another world. And that's what it is. Abraham's faith was not of this world. That's right. Right. That's right. Yeah. Ninety-nine years old, go to every doctor in the country and say, I'm going to have a baby in there. You're not of this world. You're an alien. And they'll put you somewhere. Yeah. Right? So faith is not of this world. This world is not built on faith. Amen. This world is built on do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that. Y'all know that. Right. Everything is a reaction and a, you know, action and a reaction, yeah. action and a reaction. Abraham had no reaction. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When he was 99 years old. But he still said, God, you said this was going to happen. Amen. And I've got this Ishmael and he's a wild child and he ain't even in my household now. Remember, he went away. He, and you told me I'd have one in my household. And then he comes one day and he says, Okay, Abraham, now I got you in a place. You're going to have it through Sarah. Because remember, he never told. He never told the whole story to Abraham. He didn't say you and Sarah are going to have this baby or he would have never had relations with, Ish with uh, Hagar. But he said, You're going to have a child. Then he comes a little bit longer, just like in your journey. He don't give you all the revelation at one time. He gives you pieces. He gives you pieces of revelation that you can handle at the time you need it. Abraham didn't need it at first, but now God said, okay, Abraham, you and Sarah are going to have this baby. And Abraham didn't say, yeah, sure, he laughed, but he had enough faith to stand up and go, okay, I can't do it. So what happened was he had to meet God. He met God in human flesh, the Son of Man. <coughs> he met God in human flesh who told him all the things We've had a man come, Brother Brown come, wasn't the son of man, but he was a son of man, showing us that the son of man was here. What? Did Brother Brown discern anything? He didn't discern one thing. He did not discern as a human being one thing. It was God. I got it in here, I read it the other day, I can't remember, I think maybe in a seal book. He's talking about another dimension because see, when we get in the fifth seal, that's going to be in another dimension. All right, that happened. All these other four seals happened in this dimension, but the fifth seal happened in another dimension. But he said, he said, I go in another dimension. So that's what a prophet does. He goes in, and he can't go himself. God has to take him into that dimension. All right, so let's go. That word means unknown. Unknown. Abrogate. Unknown. Abrogate. Unknown by an authoritative act. That's what it was. 